Hello, my dears, my darlings. Welcome back. On this channel, we talk about reading recommendations, writing advice, uh, original short stories and poems, and just general bookish rants. So if that sounds like it's up your alley, I hope you stick around. Today, I am going to be reading you an original flash fiction horror story that I wrote, uh, Trigger Warning for Themes of Child Abduction. Without further ado, let's get into the story. The story is called Aged Up, written and narrated by Joy Oshleda. Carl stares at the faces on the wall. He counts them. Thirteen. Thirteen missing children tacked beside the door of the unisex Walmart bathroom. A baker's dozen, he thinks, a slight smile tipping his lips up. The tall, middle-aged man with graying blonde hair and a plaid flannel shirt studies the images of the lost children intently with pale, slushy blue eyes. Most are probably runaways, he knows. Statistically, abduction numbers are dwarfed by runaways, and of those abductions, precious few are committed by strangers. Cases of kids snatched from the playground and locked in a basement for ten years, while sensational and ludicrously popular when they occur, are an anomaly compared with the profusion of disgruntled divorcees who abscond with their children. Carl picks absently at the hem of his flannel sleeve as he wonders what good posters like these really do. Does anyone really remember the faces on the newspapers and telephone poles and bulletin boards? Has any parent ever clutched their long-lost child to their breast and said, Thank God for the milk carton? Carl doubts it. He is probably the only person to stop and have a good long look at these kids since they were tacked up. Some of the children have been missing for several years. Those who have been lost long enough to go through noticeable physical transformations have two pictures under their name. One from when they went missing, one a computer rendering of how they would likely look now. Carl's eyes fastened on a picture of a girl third from right and two down. The name Colleen O'Malley is printed under the photo. He doesn't think the aged-up version of her looks right at all. The girl, four years old when she disappeared, is pictured with curly auburn pigtails and sparkling brown eyes. She's rosy and laughing, with miniature round eyeglasses secured around her head with a little strap to accommodate a toddler's wanderings. In her other picture, aged up to 14, Her auburn hair is longer, and as curly as it had been when she was small. Her brown eyes still have that spark of life and laughter in them. Her glasses are still round, but larger, and brown instead of pink. She is smiling, showing neat white teeth. Goodness, Carl thinks. Computer renderings are rather flattering. But not very accurate, he muses. Surely, being a victim of abduction for ten years must have taken more of a toll on her. For she is not a runaway. He is certain of it. Surely, her shiny hair would not hold those groomed curls without the necessary products. It would be dull and frizzy, uneven and thinning. Who ever heard of a kidnapped child with laughing eyes? No, they would be glassy and fearful. Certainly, her captor would not have bought glasses to fit her older face, and if she had worn them at four years old, her eyesight must have been terrible. No, she would have had to learn to cope without such luxuries. She would have a permanent squint, always walking, shuffling a bit to avoid tripping over unseen objects. She would not be smiling, and it is a safe bet that she would be missing several teeth. The others must certainly be yellowed and rotting from neglect. Carl shoots a quick, wary glance around the store, sparsely populated with shoppers, then quick as a striking snake, shoots out a hand and rips the girl's picture from the wall. The computer imaging is absurd, but he thinks he knows someone who might like it. Carl loads his groceries into the passenger seat of his pickup truck and takes the scenic route home. After winding through back roads till his tires are crunching on a narrow dirt lane, he pulls into the expansive gravel that serves as a driveway. Carl hauls his groceries inside, letting the screen door slam behind him. He whistles jauntily as he puts away the few items, leaving a family box of cornflakes out. He pours a dry bowl of the cereal, not bothering with milk or a spoon, and meanders over to the basement door. Carl tromps down the sagging wooden stairs, the bowl of cornflakes in one hand, pulling the folded missing poster out of his back pocket with the other. Colleen, he calls cheerfully, do you know who this is? He yanks a light string at the bottom of the stairs, and the naked bulb illuminates a girl huddled in the corner of the unfinished basement, 
curled up on a ragged mattress. He holds the poster right in front of her face. She pushes her tangle of frizzy red hair out of her face and squints at the picture. No, she whispers. I hope you enjoyed this recording of Aged Up, written and narrated by Joya Schleda. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!